Next one, Proverbs 23 and 6. Now, this one's a little on the, a difficult one, but I'm going, to do my, I'm going to do the best that's available here. All right. Now, remember the metaphor. What's the metaphor for bread? What kind of understanding? Understanding of God, right? Everybody got that? Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Have you ever eaten with somebody who has an evil eye? Yeah. What, what does that mean, evil eye? Kind of twitches off to the side, looks the wrong way. What is an evil eye? You ever seen anybody with an evil eye? I mean, come on. Do you know? I mean, we, we have this phrase, the evil eye. What is that? Is it kind of bluish or is it bloodshot or what is an evil eye? Don't look at me with your evil eye. What does that mean? It, well, yeah, which, which one is it? It's, it's one of them. It's either on the left or right side, and it's like he's just got that weird look in his eye. What is it talking about? Hasn't talking about anything about an eye, left or right. It's talking about that which is in your what? Your mind. So what's evil? I covered this before. What's evil? Right. Anything that's opposite what God says. Now, Dainty Meats is located in Genesis with Jacob, Esau, and Isaac. Let's look at more where the evil eye is found. All right here in Luke eleven thirty four, Jesus explains it in more detail. The light of the body is the what? The eye. Is it the left or the right eye? Therefore, when thy eye, what's your eye? Again, it's referring to your mind's what? How you see things, how you perceive things. Is single. What's single mean? What's single mean? One. What happens when you have two or three or four or five or six? It's called confusion, right? You ever have, how about, I, I like someone giving me directions to how to get to some place, and everybody you ask gives you different directions. Now, does that make you feel like you know where you're going? No. But from their perspective, it's right. Remember in Tennessee, how do I get to such and such? Well, you can't get there from here. I'm like, well, then how do I get there? <laughs> so everybody has a different perception of reality. The question is not who's right, but what is right. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, one source only, which is of God, the whole body shall be filled with light. But when thy eye is what? Evil, thy body also is filled with what? Darkness. There's no light. It looks like light, seems like light, but it's wrong. Does that make sense? Anybody been caught in that situation? Yep. Oh, part being human. There's evil eye again. So it has nothing to do with the left or right eye. It's not someone that looks at you. It's what's going on as a perception of what? Reality. Matthew 6, 23. But if thy eye be what? Evil. Now, this is in Matthew. That was in Luke, and that's referring to Proverbs. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of what? Darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that what? Darkness. How many here really have no doubt that you walk in light? How many here have no doubt that you, by your sheer will, can say, I will now only think light. I will only have one source. Can you do that for five minutes? How many here can say, absolutely, without a doubt, this, if from this next five minutes, I'm going to be godly and only godly? How many can do that? How many are confident you can do it for at least five minutes? Five minutes? Sound good? You going to put it to the test? Okay, let's go into Matthew chapter 20. Now, I want you to take a deep breath. And you're only going to think godly thoughts for the next five minutes. 
because you're going to, I'm going to give you a verse of scripture that you're going to have to explain. All right? If you have godly thoughts, it'll make total sense. If you don't, you're going to be totally corn-fused. Right? I made that word up. All right, you ready? Let me know when you're ready. All right? All, in, all ready? Raise your hand. Okay? All right? Did you raise your hand? All right, hand, thumbs up. Okay, I guess that's the same thing as a hand. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Chapter 20, verse 1. Make sure you stay centered on spiritual things. All right? For the kingdom of heaven is like, all right, here it is. What is this called? Simile, simile right. That means it is similar to. Doesn't mean it's a metaphor, it's a simile. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. He owns that house. Who went out early in the morning to hire what? Laborers. All right? Into his what? Vineyard. In really important. The vineyard's really key. All right, now, I'm going to divide the room up into laborers and the householder. Okay? So which side wants to be the laborers? Okay, laborers on this side. Okay, how about householders? Right, it's yours. Okay, here we go. Now you put yourself in the householder's place. You put yourself in the laborer's place. Got it? Stay spiritually minded. In the morning, hire laborers into his vineyard. Verse 2. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny, what? A day. There you go. He sent them into his what? Vineyard. That's right early morning as the sun comes up. And he went out, verse 3, about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Verse 4. Now that's 9 o'clock now. How many of everybody's been working for how long? Three hours, right? About. Now at this time, saw others standing in line in the marketplace. And he said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give thee, you. And they went their what? Their way. And he went out about the what? Sixth hour. And then what? The ninth hour. And then, and did likewise. Verse 6. And about the eleventh hour, the eleventh hour, how much time is left before sunset? One hour. One hour left. How long have people been working, laborers? And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand you here all the day idle? And they said, Because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. That's the word lumbano. Verse 8. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them hire, beginning from the last unto the what? So are those who only work one hour, what'd they get? And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. All right. And when they all came, were hired, about the 11th hour, they re received every man a what? A penny. And when they had received it, they murmured amongst the good man of the house. Now, the word God calls him a good what? And the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. Verse 10. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received what? How many laborers agree with that? If you spent 12 hours, wouldn't you, and then a person only spent one hour, and you got the same pay, how many would be happy with that? <laughs> it's not right. Or is it? How many say if, that there's something fishy here, that that's not right? Raise your hand. You right? How many say that is totally correct? Raise your hand. 
to the problem. What is right? Now, don't read ahead because that will spoil it. If you read ahead, then you're not going to get the impact of this. You've got to understand the difference between what we assume and what we think is not going to be what? Correct. And when they had received, they murmured against the good man of the house. Verse 12, saying, these last five wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. So what's right? Should the person who only did one hour, re how many think it's not right that person working only one hour should get the same of those who spent the whole day working under the heat and labor and get the same pay. Well, how many think that's right? How many think it's wrong? Okay, now put on your spiritual think caps. Engage the switch that says, I'm spiritual now. Right? Because what the world says is spiritual, that which is highly esteemed among men, is a what? An abomination. If you know God's word and you're supposed to be a judge by the scriptures, you better understand this. And he said unto them, and said, remember this is a parable of the kingdom of what? Heaven. Verse 13, and he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. Thy way is a pretty intense phrase. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Whoa. Verse 15. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thy eye evil because I am good? So if you think it's wrong, you're the one that has the eye of what? Evil. Evil. If you felt it's not fair that they should all get the same pay, I'm sorry. You're the one that's evil. Isn't that interesting? Why is this called a simile of the kingdom of heaven? Why? 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 Verse 15 again. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thy eye evil because I am good? Verse 16. So Christ ends this with, so similarly, the last shall be first and the first last. For reason, here we go, many be called, but few are what? Chosen. Whoa, what is this about? What part of the kingdom of heaven is this talking about? The Bible interprets itself in the what? The verse, and in what? Context, and what? Where it's used before. Staying in context. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way and said unto them, this is the completion. Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. 
Romans. To mock and to scourge and to what? Crucify. And the third day he shall what? That's what this is about. The resurrection. The last shall be what? First. And the first what? Last. What's the penny? It's the resurrection that they all receive. For what? For their labor. What did Jesus call his disciples? The laborers. Let's go in the first Corinthians. All right, here we go. Chapter 15. There we go. 15. First Corinthians. All right, but now, verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the what? The dead, all right? And become the what? First fruits, the first what? One. The first what? First one. Up from the what? The dead. That's pretty intense. First one. That's what first fruits means. Verse 21. For since by man, death by man also, the resurrection of the what? Dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made what? Alive. But every man in his own what? Order. Christ was the what? First. The last shall become what? First. Now here's where it gets interesting. The last one to get up from the dead will be who? Adam. But between Jesus getting up from the dead and Adam getting up from the dead, there's a group in the middle. Who is that group? Who is that group? Then come at the end, that's the telos, when he shall have delivered up, I'm sorry, verse 23. I'll start with verse 22. For, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made what? Alive. It's time about the resurrection. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Did he get up from the dead? Yes. Did he eat and drink? Yes. Then there's a second group. Then Christ at his what? Coming. That's the group I'm working toward. Hopefully you are too. Then, 24, the telos, when you shall deliver it up, the kingdom to God, and that's the last part in the resurrection of the just and the unjust. So that's located in Revelations. It's also in John, and I'll show you it in John. Talking about the same thing. The Gospels are all centered on his being raised from the what? The dead as the true Messiah. Chapter, chapter 5 of John, Gospel of John. Chapter 5, verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming for which all they that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Verse 29. Chapter 5, verse 29. And shall come forth, they that have done good. What's good? That's right. Having God's thoughts, God's images, declaring the identity that God gave them and acting on it. They have done good and on to the resurrection of life. And they that have done evil. What's evil? The good that you think rather than what God says. Unto the resurrection of what? Now that's. The first shall be last, and the last shall be what? First. Now you understand it. Um, the question is, what about that one hour, you know, so many hours or whatever, and still getting paid the same? Well, it's, it, we're going into 1 Corinthians, and in 1 Corinthians, same book, same subject matter. i got to get there now. I know, I know, I should get a new Bible, but... A Bible. <laughs> and we were in chapter chapter 15. Now we continue reading. And it's all about the resurrection. Not think about resurrection. Getting up from the what? 
the dead. That's what it's about. But what are those who are, so when Christ comes back, those that have only worked one hour, like they really get to God's word and they really, they're really committed and they do the work, maximum effort, and Christ returns, that's only one hour or, well, 15 minutes. Now you understand that one hour. <laughs> Now you, you got it, so it's only one hour, and they still make it. Now here you have, you know, you go to chapter 11. I mean, we're in chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it says, verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, the flesh and blood, the kind we got right now, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. How about the flesh and blood that Jesus has now? Oh, no problem. This kind won't work. Neither, not talking about the kingdom of what? The kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, that means die, but we shall all be what? Changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For reason, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised what? There's getting up from the dead. That's what it's talking, that's what Jesus was talking about. What if they only got, yeah, that's in verse chapter 15. And in verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead, those that have died. What happens if they, they got into the kingdom of heaven, confessed Jesus as Lord, really, that was their reality, that he was raised from the dead, and really go gangbusters and then die? Now what happens? Let's still make it. Well, they only put it in one hour. That's okay. That's okay. Well, I disagree. All those laborers should not get the same pay. Well, then you don't belong when Christ returns. If you think that it's not right that someone should get the same pay whether they worked one hour or their whole life, then that pretty much knocks you out when Christ returns, doesn't it? Because you're saying it's not godly. You're saying it's wrong. So either God is wrong and you're right, or God is right and you got an evil eye. <laughs> I'm sorry, what the world says does not fit what the word says. Even in your best, you've got to check with the word. You've always got to check with the word. What is of God? That's why it says, Matthew 20, 15, is it? It's not lawful for me to do what I will with my own. And when Christ returns, he knows what is his. Whether that person stood one hour or his whole life. Is thy eye evil because I am good? This whole, that whole parable is expressing who? Jesus. What? He's about to do after he's raised from the what? The dead. Subject matter. Getting up from the what? Dead. How many here like to stay dead and not have to worry about this whole thing? Not me. I plan on seeing you all for a long time. Hopefully, I want to see you all for a long time. That's the subject matter. Okay. Does that answer the question about the one hour? All right? So is that clear? Well, I haven't dedicated my whole life to God or tried to walk. I just got into it. Well, hey, it's okay. Just stay in it. That's right. Just keep, keep doing it. Make it your habit pattern. Make it your life. You're going to make it. Then you're stuck with me for all eternity. If not, request to be separated. Whatever. <laughs> all right. Now we go into the next one. It's pretty intense. When thou doest alms. Let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do it. Oh, my, that must be. You're looking at me. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yeah, I saw you. No, you didn't. Don't. Don't. That's not what it's talking about. What does it mean, your left hand and your right hand? Your eyes don't. How can your hand see? What, was, the, was the left hand run over there and tell, you know what I did? I did this. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I did, I did it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. That's silly. What is this talking about? Don't left your left hand what thy right hand do it. What could that possibly be talking about? Do your hands talk to each other? 
Do you talk to your hands? How are you this morning? I'm fine. How are you? I mean, come on. That, that's, that's totally absurd. This is not about a Greek and Roman culture. By the way, someone says, so what's the real purpose of the dodecahedron? I said, freaking, I don't know. And neither does anybody else. And yet it's a true Greek and Roman object, and we have no idea. The triangle we all know, right? It's for, in fact, women do, even when you go to a spa, they do it, do it to the women, you know, they scrape them. You know, not that I've ever been to a spa, but I've heard about it. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. What is that talking about? Does it make sense to us? No. Now, if you ever get a chance to go to Asia, I would really recommend going to, to Thailand or like the regional areas of India or Thailand. I think the way I learned this is Thailand, right? So there's this left hand and the right hand. The right hand is only for good things. The left hand is only for what? If, if, you're, if there's dog poop on the ground and you had to pick it up, which hand do you use it with? The left hand, not the right. If you're going to put food in your mouth, which hand do you use? Your right hand. Never touch anyone with your left. Very bad idea. If you meet someone from Asia and they don't speak English and they're, you, obviously they're from Asia, don't talk up and walk up and touch them with their left hand. Do keep that out of place. How do I know this? Give me three guesses how I learned this. <laughs> You're going, to get, you're going to get someone's going to, if they're tied, they're probably going to kick you in the head. And you wind up in a fight you don't want. You don't, you don't touch people with your left hand, ever. All right. This is your toilet hand. You touch places that you don't touch anywhere else normally with this hand. All right. So Proverbs 12, 13, 12 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his what? Mouth. And the recompense of a man's what? Hands shall be rendered unto him. So what a person does, his hands that he uses, is he a person that is... Now, let me... We have some left over from this during the, the Middle, Middle, uh, Middle Ages um, with, the, the invasion, with the movement of the Muslims into Europe through Spain and uh, across Eastern Europe. And that's where we get the phrase. The, the Latin term that the words are used, the left hand is called sinister, the right hand is called dexter. So when you think of sinister, it just means the left. The person is left. They, they are left, left-handed people. Not that people with left hand are evil. They are left-handed. That means they, they always do the left things, the wrong things, the things that are ungodly. When, when people write, what do we do? We write what? From the left. We start from the left to the right. In the Eastern culture, they start from the what? The right to the left. Scriptures are always written from the right to the left. Got it? The things of the world can be written, especially when you're in Rome and you have to deal with Rome, then you write from the left to the right and give it to them. It's a curse. But anyway, that, there's a lot of comments about that during the, the fourth century, especially in Byzantium. But anyway. All right. So recompense for a man's hand. So if he is... A sinister person, he's going to reap the fruit of his sinister, being a sinister person, which means a left-handed. left, -hand, left -handed. If he's a dexter person, a right person, seeks after good, then he's going to get the recompense. So it, it means his words and his what? Actions. Proverbs 3, 13 through 16. Happy is the man that findeth what? Wisdom. What kind of wisdom? That's godly wisdom. Got it? Godly wisdom. That's the how to do something. And the man that getteth what? So there's knowledge. Everybody has knowledge, but how many have applied it? That's what? Wisdom. And as you continually apply it, you get what? Understanding. 
the first time you try to drive a car, how well you knew how to do it, but doing it, the knowing of the how, and actually what? Doing it was a little bit more difficult, right? Especially if you had a clutch. Right? How many of you ever learned it? How was it like when you first learned to drive? The person next to you probably freaking. <laughs> right? So, right. So happy is the man, and that's the word blessed, by the way. Not happy. Happy, happy, happy. No, it means receiving revelation from God. God gives knowledge, wisdom, and what? And then he gives more what? Doctrine. And then as you apply it, you get reproof. And then you finally get what? See, that's why most of our teachings that are really intense are all for ACF side, not for Ebros. This is Ebros. This is very basic. I, I'm only doing the basics here. People go, oh my God, that's so advanced. No, it's basic. Just basic. You want to get advanced? That's the ACF side. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth what? God only gives. What's on the menu? God only gives what? Doctrine, reproof, and what? Correction. He gives knowledge, wisdom, and what? Well, how does that relate to not doctrine, reproof, and correction? The parent's trying to give the child wisdom. The child looks at it as being, get off my case. I'm not on your case. I'm trying to help you understand. From the parent's point of view, it's doctrine. I mean, I'm sorry, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. From the child's point of view, it's what? Doctrine, reproof, correction. All the time you're always correcting me. Why are you always correcting me? What kind of a mother are you? Always getting on my kid. Well, they're trying to give him what? Wisdom and what? Understanding. But as any good Roman and Greek child, to the parents. <laughs> True. All right. Happy is the man. That's the blessed. Is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that getteth what? That's consistently applying wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand. Wisdom being a female, a woman. Women are supposed to be wise. <sighs> supposed to be. All right. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, the worst is what? Riches and honor. Riches and honor come from the world, and length of days comes from God. That's the right side. So the giving is on the what? Don't give a gift with your what? Left, left hand. You take with the left hand. You understand? The left hand is for what? Taking. The right hand is for what? Giving. The funny thing is, when you go to a restaurant, they put food, they give to you on the left side and take on the what? The right side. That's Don't do that on the east. People won't eat the food. Two different what? Two different cultures. I touched the table with my left hand. Everybody got up and left. And it was a special feast for me. My one-year anniversary in Japan, and I touched the table with my left hand. All the food had to be thrown away. Did I feel stupid? I'm asking, do I, did I feel stupid? Yes. Did I do other dumb stuff? Yeah, way too much. But anyway. All right, Deuteronomy 12, 32. Though I've heard Japan's becoming more Americanized as we speak. All right, Deuteronomy 12, 32. Whatsoever I command thee, observe to do it. Thou shalt not what? Add, which would be which hand? Adding is what? The right. Taking away is what? Just the opposite of ours, right? Just the opposite. What's everything I command you observe to do? Thou shalt not add to it thereto, nor what? All right, I'm going to point to it. You give me the hand. Ready? Not an applause. I mean, which hand? Thou shall not, what? Add. What hand? Right. All right. Nor diminish from it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Deuteronomy 28, 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. To the right hand or to the what? Yeah. To the left. 
You don't add to it or subtract from it. What happens if you do? You wind up serving what? Other gods. Other gods. Because well, I don't serve any other god. Well, how come you add to the word? Who told you that was what the truth was? How come you're diminishing it? How come you say you got a good eye and your eye is evil? What's up with that? Who have you been listening to? Okay, so I'm going back to the time of Abraham, right? This is from Mesopotamia. That's not Abraham, right? It's an architect. He builds things, right? Now, I want you to notice real carefully, which one is the right, the correct statue? Now, this happens in books all the time when they show you an image, and it's freaking reversed. So you've got to know when you look at an uh, image from antiquity, which is the right one? Which is the left one? I mean, which is the right one? Which is the correct one? If you try and fold your hands that way, it won't work. Because that, it won't work. You have to have two right hands or two left hands. I don't happen to, it doesn't fit right. Give me your hand. Okay, notice that. Two right hands. Her fingers here, my thumb here, right? That's two right hands. Two left hands look like this. Now, I, you could cheat and look at the cuneiform, but how many here read cuneiform? Okay. So that wouldn't help. How about here's a quicker, bigger view of it. This is in the way. See, there's two, two hands. That's the right one, because there's two right hands. This is the wrong one, because that's two what? Left hands. You see it? And all your builders and all the scribes that you see statues of, you're going to look at their hands, and they have two right hands, unless some idiot photographs it and reverses the negative which happens a lot. I got books so you can look at and go, that's ridiculous. That's not how it was. Now, how many know this man? How long have you known him? Dun Ank Amun. Dun Ank Amun. All right? It means son of God, Amun. That's what his name means. He's called the son of God in Egypt. All the pharaohs are called sons of God. They're supposed to represent God. All right, so where is his left hand? First, what is this? Who knows what this is? All right, this is called a flail. It's for punishment. Whack, whack. That hurts. There's pieces of metal and bone in there. That's, a, that's an owie, big time. What's this? It's a shepherd's crook to, to help get the sheep. You grab and hook them and then be able to lead them. So this is to protect and defend. This is to punish. So notice that his to punishment is in his what? To his, you see what I'm saying? To punish is in his what? His right hand. So he's strict on good and what? Bad. All right. There's two, two animals up here. I mean, not animals. They represent animals, right? One is the vulture, and the other one is the what? Cobra. This cobra is, how many have ever seen a cobra? I would run if you do. <laughs> okay, what's, what's interesting about a cobra? A cobra, the way to tell if someone is guilty of something is you throw them in a pit of cobras. The cobras bite him, he's evil. If they bite him and he survives, that means he took part of it, but he himself was not evil. That's how, that's the judgments during the time of Abraham. An evil person was thrown in a pit of cobras. Now, what's with the cobra? The cobra is really a unique animal. 
is that it has the poison to kill 20 men. I guess it can kill women too, but I mean, <laughs> it'll kill 20 people, right? So if you get bit by a cobra, kind of like that's your whole day is ruined, like permanently. But one thing about the cobra is he does what's called a dry bite. Not a drive by, that's a different thing. <laughs> a dry bite means that he bites, but he doesn't any venom. And this has happened with children who were playing and they were just you know, little toddlers, they were crawling along and the cobra bit the child, but the child never got any poison. This happens a lot in India, which has the big king cobras that eat other venomous snakes, and he eats all other venomous snakes. He guards the village. So you can actually go to a village in India, and there's this big cobra, and everybody's fine. Everybody's playing, and they don't mess with him. Isn't that weird? <laughs> kind of like being in Florida, and there's this big crocodile walking down the street. <laughs> that happens. All right. So understand, so that's what the cobra is. It, re it refers to what? Judgment, right? To make the proper judgment whether the person in, in punishment is either evil or good. If they're good, no punishment. If they're evil, then to death. And basically, the best way to find out is throw them in the pit of cobras. Now, if you can look under Google and type in cobra pit, you will see that there's a man who, in, like he's in Thailand, and he sweeps the cobra pit. And these are all deadly cobras. Not one bites him. One came right up to him. He picked it up, and he removed something that was in its mouth, and then let it go. Yeah, he slapped one on the head. It was like, whoa, dude. But it knows he's there to clean it, and they're not going to attack him. They get pissed. They'll hiss. They'll make the hood like, hey, dude. But they're not going to. Now, me, I'm sorry. I don't like cobras at all. <laughs> I'm not a snake person. So <laughs> now what's on the other side of this? The other side of this is the vulture, which rid of evil. What evil? Rotting corpses, things that have died. It eats that which is what? dead and decaying. It removes it from the earth. Does that make sense? So it removes that which gives death and destruction. So now you understand the right and the left. So the left hand is for what? Punishment, taking away. The right hand is for what? Blessing. But notice they're crossed. That means the side over here is for the, it's, right, it's, it's blessing, but with strict guidelines. The other side is punishment, but with strict, goodly, what? Guidelines. That's why it's like this. Is that making sense? Everybody with me? Okay, now we move into Proverbs 2017. So we understand the left hand talking with the right, what does that mean? The left hand is what? The world. The right hand is godly. Don't mix the two. Don't mention, if, you do, if, you, if you're doing things for God and it's wearing you out, you don't go, I'm so worn out doing things for God. Don't do that. <laughs> now you're mixing your left with your what? The right hand. Oh, look at me. I haven't eaten in four days. Well, screw this. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. You never, ever, ever work for God and sit there and see, I'm all worn out because I'm doing this for God. That's like. That's left, you're letting your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Don't seek the praise of man from doing God's will. Seek the praise of who? God. Don't let the world know when you're doing something of God. Does that make sense? You're not seeking the praise of man. You're seeking the praise of who? God. And that's why God rewards you. you. You do it in secret. God rewards you what? Openly. Is that making sense? All right, ready. Proverbs 2017. Bread of deceit. All right. Proverbs. Now, we're talking about bread. Bread is made. Okay. Understand, the word, the sower soweth the what? The word. A word has, it's a capsule, right, that has information in it. 
When a person gets it, they may get the word, but they get the wrong what? Image. Got it? The object is the more of the words you get that are correct, the more you can make, and they're seeds, so how you can make bread with it. So bread of deceit is sweet to a man. What is deceit? Bread of deceit. What's that? It's when you know what the Word of God, Jesus calls anyone who knows the Word of God and does just the opposite is being deceitful. So it's to know the Word of God and do what? The opposite. Deliberately. So the bread, that's wisdom, that's understanding. Understanding of deceit is sweet to men. So I'm going to sit back there and I'm not going to do, I know that's what the Word of God says, but I'm going to do this instead because I'll get this benefit or that benefit. But afterwards, his mouth should be filled with gravel. Now, that makes a lot of sense, right? Your brain goes, all right, I, 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 all right, bread of deceit. I've never heard of, can you imagine a baker? I'd like to have a loaf of deceit, please. Right? <laughs> there is no such thing, right? Again, these are all parables. And as a parable, every, all of Proverbs is nothing but what? Parables. It's super concentrated. The whole Bible is expounding everything in Proverbs. So if you, know, if you want to understand Proverbs, it's the rest of the Bible is expanding. It's like a pyramid upside down. The pyramid point is Proverbs, and it goes out from there. Got it? That's why I spent like eight years just working Proverbs and culture and customs. All right. So bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth shall be filled with what? Gravel. What is that about? All right, you got to know how you get bread. We go down to the grocery and buy it. How much does bread cost right now? Three dollars for a loaf, something like that. Four dollars a loaf. How do you get bread? You go, no, no, no. We're talking the time of Abraham. Proverbs, old book. Proverbs. All right. What's this called? What's, what's this called? Seeds. Seeds. All right. Good. Not everybody got it, but that's all right. All right. Now, what's this called? Flour, okay. What's that called? Dough. And bakers need dough, right? Got to need dough, all right. And then what's this? Nam. Nam. Oh, you know what nam is, right? That's bread, non-bread. Not non-bread. <laughs> it's non-bread. It's, it's really bread, but it's, never mind. Anyway, so that's the ancient way of making bread. All right, so we continue on. How do you go from here to there? All right, let's find out. Because this is the subject matter we're dealing with here. This is the subject matter. Bread of deceit is sweet to man, but afterward his mouth should be filled with gravel. All right, what? What? <laughs> See, this is what we're talking about. How do you get gravel in your mouth? That's one of those side dishes. No, it's, it's talking about bread. So bread and gravel. How does that wind up? How does gravel wind up in your mouth? <laughs> All right, so we have to study this and we find out, ta-da! Between here and there is this. And this is a grinding stone. Remember in Judges where the woman threw her stone and hit the, the general of the other army and the war was over because she saved the day by throwing her, her um, stone. There it is. It's just about the size of your hand. She went, waza, and killed him. That was a time when men said, women are not, they can't do anything. Well, that's why there was women judges and there were women heroes. And that's all in judges. Women kicked ass. Killed, ended the war by throwing her freaking billing stone. It's freaking amazing. Now, Samson did not have this big stone that he rolled. He sat there and did like this. It was humiliating is what it was. So that's what this is. So the question boils down to what happens when the one milling, right, does not check the flour, that's this stuff over here, for pieces of the rock or stone that they're grilling, they're drilling, they're they're milling on. What happens? 
Well, when that piece of rock gets in your mouth and you bite down, what does it do to your teeth? It breaks them. So you say it's bread. You say that flour is good, and it's not, and you're deceiving to say it is. Now, at first it may get by, second time may get by, third time, but eventually someone's going to bite down and break their what? Teeth. And guess how you punish a person for doing that? You fill their mouth with what? So this is the punishment. Now, remember in Joseph, um, the baker and the butler, the butler gave the wine to the Pharaoh, and the baker brought the what? The bread. And we looked at the Pharaoh's biggest problem was cracked teeth in their mummies. So what do you think the bakers didn't check? And it would always cost them the baker's what? Life. I don't know if you've ever broken a tooth, but you can imagine if you're a pharaoh and you break a tooth, you're going to be really upset. Okay, now we get into some really, the really intense one here. I'm not going to go into the salt covenant because that's really intense. So we first got to learn about salt first. There's three covenants in the Bible. What are they? The salt, the mantle or shadow covenant or threshold covenant, and the final one is what? The blood covenant, all right? But just to understand what salt is, okay? Jesus says to his disciples, ye are the what? Salt of the what? The earth. You're the salt. Oh, I'd rather be the pepper. No, you don't understand <laughs> what the salt is for. Well, I'll be a salsa. No, you still don't understand. The salt of the, you don't want to be anything else but the what? The salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savior, and it's interesting that he used the pronoun, the way that word is phrased, it's as if the salt was an individual who is a man, referring to his disciples. Where was shed up be salted? It is thenceforth good for what? Yeah. But to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. See, I'm teaching you how to read the word, so you go to who? God. No one comes between you and who? God. The purpose of every man and woman is to understand and to know who? God. I'm not here to come between the two of you. I'm here to help you get to God. Is that cool? All right. Oh, Father Frank, no, no, no. no I don't want to hear about your sins or anything like that. All right. So what is this talking about? Survival in the ancient time was dependent upon what? Salt. Your food, you can't, you can't hold, there's no, you don't carry a refrigerator with you travel, right? You don't have a little refrigerator. So what do you do? You take your meat and you beat it with what? Salt. You ever heard of jerky? Right? Right. So you make your meat, fish, salted fish, salted meat, and you preserved it because nothing can grow in the salt. Fungus, bacteria are killed like dead. Like hydroxychloroquine is a form of salt. And quinine. All right. That's why it's knocking out the, the uh, coronavirus. All right. Survival in ancient times was dependent upon salt. It was used to clean surfaces and floors in food preparation and cooking area. Right? So where the food was being prepared to make sure you got good food and you didn't wind up with something that was going to like make you sick, they would scrub that area that, where they made the food, how the food was prepared, they scrubbed it with what? Salt. Water and what? Salt. How about the floor? The, you can't let food stay on the floor. You, you sweep the floor because insects will come into the house. Not good animals to have in your house. So you help keep them out. When we were in uh, Southeast Asia, Patricia and I were really fascinated by the size of the ants. They're as long as your little finger. One time I said, um, a donut. I bought a donut. I was like, oh, a donut. Because you don't get donuts over there. You have to go and get one special. And I got a donut and I set it down. I was, yeah. And I had to go to the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom. And it was like 4.30 in the morning, right? I was only gone like about a few minutes. And I come back and I didn't even think about it. And I just grabbed the 
the donut and bit down into it, and all of a sudden my whole face was just covered with ants. Do you understand how fast this happens? It's really quick. So you don't want these creatures in your house, so you have to keep everything. Salt is a great deterrent. You don't want them in your house. You just don't. So you have to, and you, you see the people. We used to have a lot of people that we were teaching the word to, and the women would come in there, and they would scrub. The, they would take big buckets of water and go whoosh all over the floor, and they would scrub it, and they had these big containers, earthen containers of salt, and they would take it, and they'd throw it all over the place. And they brought this big container and set it down, and they'd throw the salt everywhere, and they'd scrub our floors for us. You know, and they got coconut husks, and they would polish those coconut husks. Now, if you've got one of these little containers of salt, that's a wooden container. That's what you do when you, you're going to put on food, beat it into the food, or you're going to scrub a table or something. You don't want to leave food anywhere, just like a really bad idea. You want to make sure all food and no bacteria. You just want to keep salt, take it all out. So salt was stored in large clay jars in the kitchen area. All right, this is what we learned where you're supposed to keep it. We had to learn all this stuff. This shows you the size of the jars. They're not small, right? See that? They're about this high. And they sit them in the corner away from everything. And when the women clean the floor, these things get like wet on the bottom. So here's another one. This is like this from Crete, maybe. I don't know. But um, notice the different color here. See that? That's from water, this, the floor being washed. And it sucks up the water into the clay. See that? Daily washing the floor causes water to saturate the bottom of the clay jar. See the line right there? See, it's salt saturated. Resulting in the salt, not here, but in the bottom, to no longer be salty or effective. What happens is it pulls the minerals out from here, combines it with the salt, and the salt is of no value. It doesn't produce. It doesn't kill bacteria. And if you taste it, it tastes terrible. It's just It's worthless. All that salt down here is of no, no, no purpose. So let's slide this down there. So 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 7. For God... And we're still talking about this. Jesus is saying, ye are the salt of the what? The earth. But if the salt have lost his savior, what's the problem? You're not the salt at the top. You're at the salt at the what? The bottom. Why? Because of the water of the, of the world, the thoughts and images of the writing over the thoughts and images of God. It is henceforth good for what? Nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under the foot of men. All right, you ready for this? Bear with me. That's a little furry creature. Right? For God, who command the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 